Talk episode 26. Yeah, it's Christine, hi. So today we're talking about this new book. It came out a few days ago. It's called Bloodlines by Rochelle Mead. She's awesome. You might have heard of her because she also wrote this awesome series called A Vampire Academy. You might have heard of it, six books. So Bloodlines just came out and it's a spin-off series. The main character is Sydney, the alchemist from Vampire Academy. She helped out Rose. Now she's the main character and she's been recruited to help protect and hide Jill, Lissa's only living sibling that allows her to keep the position as queen. You know how Lissa's queen? You need to have at least one relative to be queen. So she has one living relative and it's Jill. So people came and tried to attack Jill. So they decided to put her Jill in hiding because they can't have Jill being attacked because Lissa's gotta stay queen. That's where Sydney comes in. She is the protector alchemist person. They go down to Palm Springs, California. They're undercover at a boarding school. Sydney's pretending to be a student. Jill's all a vampire living with humans. It's it's fun stuff. And Adrian's there and Eddie's there and, and it's it's pretty cool. There's a little synopsis for you. The problem is they're trying to attack Jill. Stuff you need to know. Go get the book, read it, come back and discuss it with us, okay? Bye if you haven't read it yet. I read this book on my iPad because my iPad is where I read the Vampire Academy books and I couldn't break the trend because I've already read six other Vampire Academy books on the iPad. I do not know exactly how many Bloodlines books they're going to be in this series. Let's jump right into things. So the beginning, Sydney's kind of in trouble because she helped out Rose and now the alchemists call, call her like a vamp lover and she's threatened to be sent to this re-education center which supposedly is a place where they brainwash alchemists into thinking all vampires are evil again. Which really isn't true in this series because Maroi are just like humans and they don't attack people unless they're bad people just like bad people attack other people. But seriously, they're just promoting hate and prejudices by ingraining this into their kids. So Sydney's like deathly afraid of all vampires. It's kind of annoying because anytime anything just a room with Jill, you know, she's like, oh my god! She's gonna bite me! Oh, oh. Or Jill's kicked out of school on her first day and she's like, Oh my god, did she bite somebody? No, Sydney. No. She's not an evil demon of the night. We were introduced to this other alchemist. His name is Keith. Keith is an asshole. He, I guess he stayed with them a little bit when they were younger. Her dad loves him and her dad is degrading to Sydney and she just aims really to earn his approval, you know, in life. Everything she does is just a disappointment. Nah, 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 nah. You're, you're ruining your daughter's self-esteem by doing that. She can't stand up to people like she should be able to because she's a strong, smart girl, woman. Authority is just crushing her and I want her to stand up to them like Rose would. I didn't mean like Rose would, I am like would. I meant Rose Hathaway would stand up to them. It's Rose Hathaway, she doesn't take any crap. Now, Sydney, when they people give her crap, she just, you know, grins and bears it. She grins and bears it because she doesn't want to get in any trouble. But Keith is getting her in trouble anyway because he's just an ass. He, he raped her sister. So the eye thing, what did you think was going on? Because she kept referencing it. Because Abe always says he has something on her. She owes Abe. She hired Abe to fake a Strigoi attack and just cut out Keith's eye. Which, good for you. Just go chop out his eye. Because he raped my sister, asshole. He spends the whole time being like, I'm holier than thou. You're so irresponsible and you should be more like your sisters and I'm just trying to save your soul. Uh, uh. Meanwhile, you are running an illegal blood letting from Maroi tattoo business is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Guys, you like my prop today? There's an open bottle of wine in the house, so I figured, you know, it's like I'm drinking blood, but it's not. And 21s is totally legal, so don't even. Yeah. Mmm, O positive, my favorite. Get it? Like Adrian, when, you know, Keith spit it out all over the place, that was hilarious. Adrian's like one of my favorite characters. I mean, he's a pain in the ass sometimes, but his charmingness, cuteness and funniness outweighs the annoying, selfish, pain in the assness, right? You see the Sydney Adrian thing coming along? They're gonna be together, right? How weird is it gonna be when that happens? Because Sydney is deathly afraid of like all vampire contact. Jill gives her a hug and it's like, oh my god, that vampire is hugging me, I can't believe this. Let's talk about this whole mean girls scenario that's going on in school. There's this Laurel girl. They keep making vampire jokes about Jill and the whole point is to keep her safe from the vampire thing. She ends up messing with her shampoo because she's like really into her hair. Oh, the tattoo business. Okay, back to these tattoos. It took Sydney to like 50 years to figure out each section of 
the clues. Come on, Sydney, you're like a genius girl and you can't you can't put that together. Just that was irritating. Also, let's talk about the bond. Okay, so right in the beginning, Sydney is eavesdropping on Adrian and Abe. I don't know why I'm here, even though Lissa and Rose said this. Abe's like, you know, you have to be near Jill. I'm like, oh my god, they're bonded, because we know there was attack. We know something really bad happened, because no one wants to talk about it. It's all fishy. Well, obviously Jill died, and obviously Adrian brought her back to life. He's a spirit user. Obviously now he's bonded, and that is why Jill always knows everything. Sydney's always like, oh my god, how did she know every little detail of what I spoke about with Adrian? Come on, Sydney, you were with Rose for, for a while. Witnessing this whole Lissa Rose bond thing because she just knew things. Other times, Sydney's genius, she knows every answer. I love the part when she's like, I found I could answer any question she asked. Some part of me said I should ration myself, but I couldn't help it. If no one knew the answer, I felt compelled to provide it. You know what she's talking about. It's like that awkward moment when the teacher asks a question, but no one raises their hand, and she's just waiting, and you know the answer, but you're just like embarrassed to answer it, and she's just like, you need to. You just need to raise your hand. On, an, on a random note, I love when they first go to Clarence's house. Adrian's like, oh, everyone's in the study. And Keith is there, and he's all like, oh, vampires, vampires, vampires. Adrian's like, they're all waiting for you. You can go right in. If you dare. <laughs> oh, oh, Lee. Right from the beginning, I was like, I do not like this Lee guy. He comes up out of nowhere. We do no background checks on him. We just assume he's a nice guy. 19 year old guy in college who's like, ooh, I love this 15 year old girl, Jill. It's weird and it's racist that they won't let her even like Mason, who was perfectly normal, and Eddie trusts him. So I trust him because Eddie is just, he's a good judge. He's a guardian. He knows his stuff. Let's talk about Micah for a second. Did you realize that he just looked like Mason? So that's why everyone was like, oh, weird about him. I was convinced he was another guardian from Vladimir Academy. The name just rang a bell and I must have just been thinking Mason. I was like, oh, he must be an undercover guardian sent there to just keep an eye over Jill and maybe even date her on purpose, you know? Kind of like first daughter kind of thing. Turns out he just looks like Mason. I don't know if there's gonna be something more to that. At the end, when Sydney's in Keith's apartment by herself, and I was like, don't open the door! He comes with a knife and he's a psychopath and he wants to be Strigoi again because apparently he was Strigoi before. Ah, uh, I didn't see that. I just thought he was a psychopath. I thought he was gonna kill Jill, actually, but he wanted to reawaken Jill. Very much like Dimitri did when he was a Strigoi. Turns out this is really interesting discovery. Once you're healed by a spirit user from being a Strigoi, you can never be Strigoi again. The end was just very different from our normal end because we're used to Rose, and Rose kicks ass at all times. With Sydney, we were kind of helpless, and it was just very frustrating for me. I don't know about you. When she hit him on the head with the yearbook, I was like, yeah, but she can't take him on. She can't take on the Strigoi when the Strigoi are coming. Adrian doesn't can't really do much either because he can't make eye contact with Lee, so he can't compel him to do anything. And Sydney did hold her own when she set him on fire, which is a whole nother thing. Like, there's a Wiccan in here now, there's witches kind of coming into the story because that teacher she was working for is apparently some sort of Wiccan. Some sort of true blood type Wiccan thing is what is coming into my mind. Apparently, Sydney, who is a very, very afraid of anything that has to do with magic, Jill is just playing with some water in the air. She's like, <gasps> She wouldn't even let Adrian heal her at the end. And I was just like, come on. She has an ability to manipulate magic. She has the power in her. She doesn't want to like, you know, take hold of it. But I'm sure within the next few books or however long this series is, we are going to see Sydney take on magic because she's going to need it for something. So now they're going to do research and maybe they can come up with a vaccine that can prevent anyone from ever becoming Strigoi, which is just brilliant. They bring in Dimitri, which is crazy now because he's gonna be around, is Rose gonna be coming to visit him? And if so, who's gonna guard Lissa? Because I know they'd probably take turns guarding her. And now this wholly screws up Adrian because he's been healing from his loss of Rose-ness because he's not over Rose. Finally, like, kind of looks at Sydney at the end and he's like, oh, you're actually really beautiful. Your eyes are like molten gold, very Edwardy, and I want to paint you. Oh, finally. And then Dimitri comes in and he's like, Rose, Rose. Rose shows her face, which I was really excited that Rose showed her face in this book. I had this whole theory worked out with the tattoos. He was talking about vampire hunters. I thought there were vampire hunters 
that were killing these people accidentally killed the humans because they thought they were vampires because they're just dumb humans. They took some of the blood and sold it to the tattoo people and they, t they would take their saliva and sell it to the tattoo people. And turns out the people were just being killed randomly from Lee. Come on, Sydney. Don't you see? That clear stuff is vampire spit. Let's talk about Adrian. I'm bored. I'm bored. Shut up. You do nothing. I'm glad he has the art stuff though. The modeling thing, that was the dumbest thing that they could do because now Jill is going to be known and people are going to want to do jobs and she's going to eventually want to do a job and someone's going to take her picture and then someone's going to find her. How much you want to bet that happens in one of the next books? I bet it happens. It, it will happen. Can you do, I really want uh, a pirate riding a motorcycle. Wait, no, a skeleton pirate motoring, riding a motorcycle on fire with, with, with a parrot, with a, with a pirate hat on him. But I want the pirate to be a skeleton pirate. Cindy's in the back going like... <laughs> Very amusing. I love when she threw the coffee on him. Once you returned into a Maroi after being Strigoi, you don't have your magic abilities anymore. Jill's playing with the water and she's like, Oh, you're a wind user, right? Make a fog over the water. Meanwhile, Sydney's like... <laughs> Lee's like, Oh, no, no, no. I thought maybe he was a spirit user because that's happened so many times. Like, oh, I'm a wind user, but I'm actually a secret spirit user and I'm going to kill you. Turns out he just lost his ability after being returned back and forth and you age slower so Sonya Karp is gonna age slower and does she not have her spirit abilities anymore? Dimitri, is he aging slower? Is Rose gonna catch up? Like what's up with that? It's interesting, we gotta see. A lot of interesting facts brought up. We learned a lot of new stuff. A girl, that keeper girl that fought Rose for her brother's hand in marriage. It's gonna be interesting because she's not used to being around people. She lives in a cave. That's gonna be, that's gonna be a venture. These triangles, cause Eddie loves Jill. Micah likes Jill. Jill was in love with Lee, but Lee's dead. So there's a lot, there's a triangle gonna happen there. I'm rooting for Eddie. Trey, I'm thinking in Sydney, gonna have like a little thing. Of course you got Adrian. Then you got Dimitri over there. Then who knows if Rose is gonna visit. It's gonna be exciting. So what did you think about the book? Let me know down there. Let me know your favorite parts. At the end, how long did it take Eddie to come and save them? Seriously, Jill is bonded to him. I feel like it took hours. It took forever. It was very exciting and I really enjoyed this book. So you should pick it up. If you just watch this whole thing, I just spoiled the whole thing for you. It's just why, why, why did why you do that to yourself? Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. You're awesome. If you wanna follow me on Twitter, it's at May. If you wanna, follow our Tumblr or ask questions on view or anything else. The links are all in that blog under the video. Okay, so thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Keep reading. Bye!